Hi everyone, Paul Richmond here. I am hanging out today with my golden teacher, Linda Regula. Hello. <laughs> Linda and I go back a long ways, right? Yes. Linda, how many years has it been? 30, over 30. Yeah. We were three and a half. <laughs> Okay, we won't get too specific, no, then we don't no. want to age ourselves since we both look so yeah. youthful this morning. He's always my golden child, and he always <laughs> will be, even if he's got gray hair and a long gray beard. <laughs> well, as long as this die, we're not going to have that <laughs> issue. <laughs> you taught me to paint, I'm going to use it. So we thought we would reminisce a little, tell you some stories, look back, since we have this awesome long history together and everybody's always kind of interested in sort of what that was like and how she taught me to paint at such a young age. I got a telephone call and a lady said, uh, uh, heard you're an art teacher and I have a son who is crazy about art. By the time we get up at six in the morning, he has drawn maybe 200 drawings. <laughs> and I said, wow, you know, cause I had taught kids from eight up. And uh, so I said, come on over and the doorbell rang and I walked down and opened the door and here's this little, three and a half year old golden haired boy standing on my doorstep <laughs> and he, the sun was shining on him and he just looked like a golden child so he's <laughs> always been my golden child. And I remember that day, I mean I was so young, I do not remember anything else from being three and a half years old, but I can totally remember the moment that we showed up and your door opened and I just saw all these paintings hanging on the wall. He just looked around, had such a curious look on his face at every painting that he stopped at and he's and I knew right then that I could teach him. We got down and I got him down on the floor and we were I said tell me a story your, tell me your favorite story and of course at that time he was so enamored by the Walt Disney princesses. So yeah, Snow White was my favorite. Yes <laughs> and so he was telling me the story of Snow White and then I said well I got a pad and paper and I said okay now draw what, what you're telling me. And that's your visual voice. How you're speaking is your vocal voice, right. but I want to see your visual voice. And he looked at me a little bit and he said, pictures talk? And I <laughs> says, well, they can. And yep. so that's how we began. He, <laughs> since he loved the story of Snow White, <laughs> uh, one of the things that went on for probably eight, seven or eight years, <laughs> he, before he came to class, he would have his father drop by the grocery store and yes. pick out a red delicious apple. But we didn't just drop by, I don't know if you realize, no, but I I'm, really did, I made dad, it, this was an ordeal. I mean, we had to go through every apple to find the perfect one for you. It was maybe like 15, 20 minute yes, project. Yes, I remember your, your dad would tell me. And I would open the door and he would have his hand behind his back and I'd say, what, what, what's going on? And he'd say, this is for you, is, my pretty. I knew he was very dramatic, very <laughs> you think? visual, and so I would take a bite of it and then I would go into this dramatic swoon <laughs> in the foyer, and he would just laugh and I'd say, is, you poison me, and he'd say, no, Linda, it's not poison, it's not poison. One of the ways that Linda would kind of help me tap into being creative was we would take a little break and it have story time. Yep. And we would be, so we'd paint a little, but then we'd go and we'd sit on the floor or on the couch and she'd say, okay, make up a story. You want to tell me a story? Sure. What should it be about? Well, it could be about a big fat hippo dancing in pink ballerina shoes. Mm, I don't think I know that story, but I do know one about, there was this beautiful princess. Oh, of course. And her name was Linda. Ooh. And there was an evil witch who kidnapped her and took her to the top of this mountain. There was a handsome prince named Prince Paul, and he came flying in on a unicorn. A unicorn? With big rainbow colored wings. Oh. And rescued you. So the thing that I always thought was so cool about your class is that unlike a lot of art teachers who make everybody kind of work do the same thing. She always was, it was always about kind of encouraging me to be creative in whatever I was interested in. You taught me the technical stuff, but we I did paintings of, what, well, Snow White, of course, oh, and yeah. Mary Wizard Poppins, of Wizard of Oz, all of my all my favorite, you know, fairy tales and cartoons. He would come in and look at my paintings. I had a very difficult childhood. Uh, and so a lot of my paintings were very, they were sad. And, but once I painted them, 
that feeling was gone. And I can remember him coming into the studio and, and he'd say, he said one day, he said, he must have been about 12, I think. And he said, um, Linda, why are your paintings so sad? And I says, well, I'm just getting these feelings out so they don't bother me anymore. And, and he said, uh, well, can I talk to you? And I said, well, sure. And he said, uh, the kids at school are really bullying me. I said, why don't you try painting something that is, uh, that tells your story? Yeah. And so he did this marvelous painting and it's called The Piece That Doesn't Fit. And I think that's the first time that he really understood how powerful speaking out in paintings could be. What you'd always been teaching me about using your visual voice, it finally kind of clicked. Yeah. I could use that to tell my story. And that was powerful because that's still what I do to this day, yeah. 30 some years later. And, so. and if you look around at his paintings, it is just, I, I am blown away. Well, but I, likewise, I've always felt that way about yours too. This is the Mutual Admiration Club. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the one he did at me. This is my best work. <laughs> it is awesome. Since we're talking about this one and it has a little bit about your story in it, why don't you tell me, because that was one of the things when I was old enough to finally start to you know, understand what your artwork was about and how you were telling the story of your childhood and stuff, I just found that to be so inspiring how you overcame so much and turned it into good. So that would be awesome if you would share that with all of our friends here. Well, uh, you see the mountain range in the background. I grew up in the mountains of West Virginia. Um, my father was a, a violent man. He was not, uh, not a nice man. My mother ran away when I was nine. There was nine kids in the family. We lived in a little old shack with no electricity, no running water, no had an outdoor bathroom, toilet. <laughs> um, my um, older brothers and sisters, they by the time I was nine and mom left, they were they had left home and married or went in the army. My had a brother in Germany and one in Korea, and, and so they had kind of left. And it was just me and my dad and my younger sister in in that area at that time. Now this was back in the early fifties. Um, women and females were not that cherished in that male environment and when my dad was going to take me out of school and wanted me to marry me off and get rid of me um i my older sister who had uh, uh, came to ohio she came back and got me and she, i was the first one in my family to graduate from high school i was the first one to uh, go on to college my uh six months after i graduated i went back and got my younger sister and made sure she graduated mm -hmm. but there was an older lady named mrs paul she was so kind to me and she's the one that found my sister when she heard that dad was going to take me out of school and everything had she not been there to mentor me i don't know what would have happened to me mm -hmm. so i have spent most of my life mentoring kids uh teaching art when i was a kid we went to a one-room school this boy behind me, he was a bully. He would spit in my hair. He would wipe snot on me. I mean, he was just a terrible person. And each week we would draw, do a drawing. And uh, I never would draw because I was really bashful and shy. And, and so, but this uh, voice on the radio was talking about a phoenix rising from ashes. And it just grabbed me and I, did this beautiful draw, I thought was beautiful, drawing of a phoenix. Mm -hmm. And the teacher, each week she would pick a drawing or a painting or whatever we were doing uh, and put it in her special place. Um, and so it was really an honor to do that. And so she chose my picture that time of the phoenix and uh, the bell rang and she went out of the room and this little bully, he ran up and he grabbed it off the wall and he tore it up and he said, you're too stupid to ever be an artist. You will never be an artist. And that was the day that I decided I would be an artist. Uh, after I graduated, I uh, married a very kind and gentle man. We lived on a big farm, big, uh, there was 144 acres. We milked cows and I did the farm You did a little house on the prairie. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, one day we were putting hay into this, we had a three loft, three story barn and we were putting hay in and I was up on the, the top loft and I fell off and hit the floor and I was laid up in a hospital bed for nine weeks. The doctors told me I'd never walk again, probably. 
And so I had went into this depression and I was becoming a B-I-T-C-H. <laughs> and my friend came over and she said, uh, Linda, I'm gonna teach you to paint. And I said, I don't wanna paint. And she said, well, I don't care what you want, you're gonna learn to paint. And yeah. her husband and my husband built an easel over my hospital bed and she said one day, she, after it was up there, she came and she put a canvas up and she squirted out a tube of purple paint and she said, now you're going to paint. And I said, no, I'm not. And so she just grabbed, grabbed my hand, put the brush in it, swapped it through that purple and made my hand go across that canvas and I was in love. Mm -hmm. And that and was, that's still your favorite color. Yeah, oh, yeah. As you can see, that's what we use. I used in her, her war paint fixture. You did recover, and obviously yeah. you're walking today. Oh, yes. And, uh, then you decided to devote your life to being an artist. And yeah. I mean, that's so empowering. A lot of people feel like they have to stay stuck in certain situations that maybe aren't fulfilling for them. But you were how old when that happened? I was 32. Wow. When that happened. And then, yeah. and you did so much. I mean, you have galleries, you ran museums, you, yeah. you know, displayed her work all over. She's, she's amazing. Well, <laughs> and this is the cover for my new yes. novel. Uh, I just published my 14th novel and it's called The Way Back Home. We'll put a link down here so you can buy that and read it and enjoy the cover. <laughs> <laughs> so Paul and I have just, we've sort of been linked together with an invisible I almost look at it as we're linked together with this invisible cord uh -huh. and it's so strange because things that happen in my life kind of parallel things that are happening in his and we get together and we have an awesome time. And you know this is we're very obviously like come from different worlds <laughs> you know I can't imagine doing anything that you just described like hauling hay I, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> you don't even cut grass do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Allergies. But no, I mean, we're very different in a lot of ways, but we are, we just are so connected yeah. always, and we it, always it, have been. It's just like our hearts are just, they're in tune with each other. Even yeah. though I'm an old lady, 72 year old lady, <laughs> and he is a handsome young 20, man. 22 year old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for hanging out with us. It's been fun thank reminiscing. You. <laughs> You're a star here on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I told him no, I wasn't doing this. And you see, I didn't take no for an answer. Yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> I've learned so much from her over the years, obviously, enough to even use it against you now. <laughs> but, you know, that is a real testament yeah. to what mentorship can yeah. do. I mean, the fact that, you know, you took me at such a young, impressionable age. And, you know, there were so many different things in my life that could have set me off course. But I just knowing that there was somebody who was always in my corner, who believed in me and was, you know, not just believed in me, but pushing me to work harder and aim higher and do more. I mean, that made all the difference and that's why, I, that's truly, I mean, because of this woman is why I'm living the happy life that I'm living today. And I'm so glad we get to kind of celebrate it here with you guys. I had such a success with you, I thought <laughs> maybe I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> yeah, and she so is. <laughs> over the years, I've probably mentored 60, 70 kids and a lot of them are from very bad backgrounds and, and so many of them are now going to college, they're married. I had a lady call me from Canada and tell me that, did I remember her and that I had mentored her when she was about 13 years old and she was having a wonderful life and, and so all I have to do is think of Paul and I know that I've left footprints. And to me, it's so important to not just exist on the, in this world, but to leave footprints behind that you can be proud of, uh, not only for your own children and grandchildren, but for other people that they can maybe be inspired by something you say or do that they will pay it forward. You've started a lot of art careers. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look around at what you do, I, I just, I'm just blown away. I just am amazed. Well, I had a pretty good teacher. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Leave us some thank comments you. down below. Say hi, give us a shout out, and uh, be sure to like and subscribe because there's going to be a lot more videos coming soon. See you guys soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> hi, everyone. Paul Richmond here, and I'm hanging out with my friend... Joshua. <laughs> Joshua Snyder Hill. We go back, what, a few years? Well, let's... Oh, ah. <laughs> well, we have a blooper reel.